Welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew. And uh, today, well, the next several days, the project we're going to be working on is a 20 foot gooseneck flatbed trailer. Uh, I say flatbed, but it's going to be more of a low profile. Uh, we'll go over some of that in a little bit, but we've got some time on my hands. And, uh, you know, I've been wanting a, a decent trailer. Years ago, I had a lady trailer. It had 3,500 pound axles, uh, tandem. Um, I put brakes on the axles, but it didn't come like that. But, uh, you know, I overloaded that trailer on a regular basis, so it was obviously not big enough for me. So since then, I've sold that trailer. And, uh, you know, I've, I've just been on the lookout for a used trailer that would suffice uh, capacity wise. And around here, I'm in Colorado, around here, at least, it seems like everybody wants new trailer prices for their old used trailers. And you start looking and, you know, I look at it, I'm like, oh, 2006, that's not too terribly old. 2006 was 14 years ago. So that's pretty old. And to think that a trailer that somebody purchased in 2006 for probably 2,500 bucks realistically, and now they're trying to ask like $3,000 for it is ridiculous. So, and those are just, those are trailers that aren't even up to, to what I need. Um, you know, I was just kind of looking at trailers to get by. And so then I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna make, you know, another mistake with trailers where I buy one that's too light for me. And uh, you know, I've got time on my hands right now, so, uh, and I like to fabricate and build stuff, so why not just build one? So what I decided and what I've wanted for a while is something around the 20 foot range. Uh, bump, I was gonna do a bumper pull originally, um, but you know, I, I want a gooseneck and now's the time to do that. So instead of ending up with another trailer that won't, you know, make me happy, essentially because I just I decided I wanted a gooseneck uh, as I understand it they they pull better uh, you can distribute can you can distribute the load on the tow vehicle way better and uh, it's just what I wanted so that's what I decided that's what we're gonna build but some things we're looking at is the width has to be wide enough that it can fit the the Dodge right here and then I've got a Ford Raptor as well so I want to make it so both of those vehicles could fit on it. So it's going to be a low boy with drive over fenders. Uh, it'll extend out. Uh, the, the bed itself won't necessarily extend out to the edge of the tires or the fenders. Uh, but once we add on our stake pockets and then we're going to do a kind of a rub rail uh, strap rail. Uh, so we can use, you know, it'll be like that. And then we can use those hook, the, the J hook straps or whatever they're called. I don't know. Just something that we can hook straps to and not have to rely on just the location of the stake pockets. The stake pockets are going to be two inch by two inch inside diameter. I know that's not conventional, but that's what I put on the Dodge flatbed. It's it's essentially the same size as your your hitch receivers. Um, so we'll just I like to keep it across the board. If I ever do uh, sideboards for it, I'll just use you know two inch by two inch square tube. Now yeah, we're at a good stopping point for this afternoon. We had a uh, partial roll of some flux core 0 0.035 wire in the machine. And we got all the cross members, well, the main cross members in today. Uh, we're going back the other direction and welding them from the backside just to make them that much stronger. But we got quite a bit done today. Even though we didn't even really work a full day today. I think it started about 10 a.m. and it's about 5 p.m. right now and had a couple of visitors stop by but the Miller Matic 215 is doing the multi Miller Multimatic 215 is doing awesome. We got a couple of clamps out, pipe clamp just to do a little bit of extra maneuvering but overall this thing has turned out real nice. I'm excited. Once we get finished welding the backside of all these cross members, the plan is to come out with a little kicker to about, eh, I can't remember the measurement, I'll have to do the math again, but or look at my, my drawings. 
to about here uh, and then we'll put another piece of three inch channel along there and then the two and a half inch square tube for the stake pocket and then the rub rail or the uh, the tie down rail so but this is all we're getting today it's time to clean up this mess and we'll get back to it tomorrow but thanks for following along i'll see you tomorrow all right we're back out here day two got a new spool of 035 inner shield wire get this new spool put in the machine then we'll get started for the day We are at the end of day two. Not a whole lot of filming today. Conditions aren't good out here. A lot of wind. And uh, I only got to work on it sporadically. So we got the, the extensions on the side here. Got a couple braces in there. Same on this side. We figured out where the axles will be. This will be the center pivot point right here. And then the uh, the tire should be around here, but down here someplace. We're at 20 feet. The way this channel is in here will protect our taillights and our marker light. Even though we had diagonal pieces in, bracing the frame, as you probably saw before, uh, when we went from pretty much on the ground to up on the jack stands, and I got all the cross members in, and then we pretty much popped these off at that point. It still came about a half of an inch out of square. So we were able to put some chains and a ratchet strap on there and rack it back into square. And we'll just leave it like that as long as we can. Uh, by the time we put the decking on, the first couple sheets of decking, there's no way it, it should come out of square. Tomorrow we're gonna work on the torque tube, which will be a round piece of probably three or four inch tube, uh, three sixteenths to quarter wall that'll go down the length of the trailer. And uh, I don't know how many cross members we're going to hit. I think we'll kind of just, I don't know if it'll be every other. It really will depend on material and what I decide to use, what I have around. Um, I've got a lot of scrap material that we could use. We could even use the cutaway, the drops of these three inch channels and just... Uh, give it a radius and then a nice taper but we'll see I'd like to use plate and be able to come up on this come down come in do the radius and then back up but we'll see what we have for material laying around just because we have so many options we'll just use one of one of what we have got to go to the steel yard tomorrow and pick up the eighth inch diamond plate decking and uh the 10 the 10 inch uh 12 pound per foot so the the 10 12 i-beams which will be the neck of the gooseneck uh, we'll probably assemble that in the garage on the nice flat floor and then figure out a way to get it out here and then tie it onto this thing we'll see yeah overall it's turned out really nice so i'm excited to get some axles under it and Start working on the neck and uh so we've got a bunch of quarter we got a, a 24 foot stick of quarter wall uh two and a half by two and a half so it's inside of two by two but it's gonna have the seam so uh kind of like we're having to do on the dodge here because i'm not gonna pay 12 bucks for a little four inch piece of receiver tube when i think i got that whole 24 foot stick for like 120 ish maybe so it's a lot of receiver, a lot of twelve dollar receiver tubes, way more than ten, obviously. So a uh, little bit of work involved there, not a big deal. But yep, those are some of the things that I uh, I want out of this trailer. So I figure in the end we're gonna have about a nine thousand dollar trailer. If I were gonna try and buy this, it'd be about a nine thousand dollar trailer for substantially less than that. But. Uh,
The materials we're using, the uh, the two main beams are going to be seven inch channel, and that's a uh, quarter wall, seven inch channel with a quarter wall. Then we're doing uh, the crossbars or the cross members are going to be three inch channel, three sixteenths wall. Uh, we got two seven thousand pound axles coming. Uh, they're both set up with brakes. Um, we have eighth inch diamond plate for the decking. And then for the goose neck, neck portion of it, we're doing a 10, 10 inch I-beam, 12 pounds per foot. So a 10, 12 I-beam. And uh, pretty much what I did was I looked at the trailers, you know, the high quality trailers that I would want to buy if I were gonna buy one. And uh, kind of, you know, mirrored it off of what I was seeing there. So that's why we went the 10, 12 I-beams seven inch channel and uh, we're going to do our cross members on 16 inch centers so all right so we have our gooseneck plan here kind of my rough drawings i understand it probably the only one who would understand it that's my drawing but uh we got our angles here pretty close we left a little extra so once we get it spread out the way it's supposed to be, an 82 inch spread on center here, uh, we'll be able to adjust there. But uh, really we just need to make these smaller so we can deal with them in this small workspace in the garage right now. So we got these marked out and cut, now we're going to flip them over, mark the other side, cut it, and then we'll cut the, uh, the web of the beam. And, uh, and we're ready to start mocking it up. This will be the, uh, the gooseneck neck or tongue uh, it'll have a I think I just had it on a 35 degree uh, kick down that will go down into the truck bed on the f-150 and then we'll attach the uh, the actual gooseneck uh, we call it coupler when it comes in but we're still waiting on axles I bought them um, a week and a half ago they were supposed to ship I guess I bought them a week ago. They were supposed to ship out five days ago. And uh, according to the tracking, they still haven't shipped. So who knows when they'll get here. But it's a lot of steel to be lugging around by hand, so we're just going to go ahead and flip it over, cut it off, and deal with a little bit less for now. Uh, we'll probably reinforce uh, around the area where one might park, you know, a skid steer or a forklift with some, you know, some runners long ways in between the cross members uh, around, you know, the, the uh, general width of a skid steer or a forklift. They're about mm, similar width, so we'll just throw some extra supports in there uh, around the axle, maybe just in front of the axle, because that's, if you're going to haul just that one item, um, you know, it'd probably be positioned just forward of the the trailer front axle. So we're, we'll reinforce that, but we're gonna end up with a really nice trailer. All right, it's kind of loud in here, but uh, I got the heaters going. It's cold again outside today. I'm ready for spring. But this is the uh, the I beams to the gooseneck portion. That one on the ground is pretty much done. But this will be the front where they come together, and uh, this angle right here is the same as that one so once you get them set out into a v which we'll do in a little bit that will flow off of that one and then straight onto that one there'll be a straight line but the coupler we're using is a four inch by four inch which this tube is not that coupler it's a lot thinner i think this is 14 gauge but it's just to kind of help me mock it up oh hung up down there yep but yeah, we'll use it. We might even tack it in place. Like I mentioned before, my axles and the coupler and the breakaway kit and tires and everything's getting shipped from the same company. And you know, as of yesterday, a week later, still no movement. So depending on when that gets here, I was hoping to get this completely assembled, put it on the back of the truck, uh, you know, ratchet strap it into place securely, back the truck up to the trailer and uh you know level everything out and weld it in place on the trailer and then move the truck out from under it and then finish weld it but 
we may end up just throwing that piece of tube in there as a placeholder just a couple of tacks and uh and then just moving this thing to the trailer that's really going to be weather dependent because like i said the weather outside is cold we just got snow again last night shouldn't be getting snow this time of year but it happens so uh, you know, weather dependent, we'll finish this thing up as far as we can and then get it moved out there when I'm tired of waiting on the other trailer parts to show up, so. But, we'll see. It started out as a day one, day two, day three project, but uh, the schedule I've had recently, it's just not working out like that, so. It's been, I'm probably about a week into this project, but those days, it's a couple of two hour days, a couple of 20 minute days, and a couple of three or four hour days, but. I'll have to try and sit down and, and figure out my hours at the end of this. I don't really care. Uh, and, you know, I figure I'm going to save four to $5,000 on this trailer from, from buying one of a similar quality. Uh, so, and it's an experience. I love to metal fabricate and build my own stuff. So, really the experience is invaluable to me. And that's why I like to do this kind of stuff. So, let's just keep working toward the finished product. This process is going to be a long one. This video isn't meant to be a how-to. It's uh, just kind of a come along for one of my projects, which is what most of my videos are on this channel. But, you know, it might give you some ideas. Maybe you'll see something in this video that I do that you don't want to do. Uh, so and then you decide to build a trailer and you decide not to do that. I'm sure that'll happen a couple times. I got a rough plan, but that's kind of how I go into my projects. I take a piece of paper and throw it down and get some ideas and then try not to screw it up too bad to where I can't fix it, which I haven't had to deal with that yet. So I don't really feel like this is gonna be one of those times. This isn't the first trailer I built. It'd be the first gooseneck trailer I built. Um, I built the camper trailer three years ago. It turned out really nice. It's still around. I honestly didn't expect it to last this long, but it's still here. Um, yeah, so come along for the project. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of time lapse and fast forwarding through stuff and some music but you know boring to watch and i get that so yeah come along fast forward through if you feel so inclined but you know it'll be interesting so let's do it all right so i made these two tripod stands here the other day it's a three quarter inch acme thread and uh, i got some acme nuts here Acme nut there welded onto this, uh, I guess, pad. So a frame rail can sit up in here. Got our three quarter inch Acme. This washer is welded to this heavy wall tube. And then we've got some tube that come down and make the feet and the legs. But uh, on the back of the trailer, currently we have two jack stands. And let's move that way. I'll just show you what I'm talking about. these two jack stands here sitting on the wood it's really uneven out here you can kind of see the trailer is perfectly level but uh you got these two heavy jack stands here which aren't too bad that one looks a little sketchy but it's not moving i've done the old shake test on the trailer a couple times but if we move to the back here you'll see we got it, these two resting on this pallet because they're just too short and i didn't have a good base for them so we're going to move the ones in the front to the back and then get rid of these all together. And then in the front we'll have the new tripods that I built. But uh, it's really kind of sketchy getting on the tra under the trailer right now. Actually because of this one here you can kind of see the bow and I just don't want that wood to break while I'm under there. And uh, we're going to swap them out and continue this project. So one thing that I ran into with these sheets is... I put the back one on, overhung the rear cross member, or the rear bumper, if you will, and uh, centered it on that cross member up here because they're 16 inch centers, so 48 inches should work out to uh, a cross member split in half, two cross members, and then a cross member split in half. Uh, but as you can see, same as this one is right now, overlapping, and that is because these are four foot and one inch. 
So because they're not a true four foot, I have to use a plasma cutter and cut off three quarters to an inch off of all of them to make them fit on this inch and a half cross member. So let's get these jack stands swapped out and then uh, we'll get back to welding and cutting. All right, so the uh, gooseneck's coming along quite nicely, but uh, one of the things I want to add, similar to these fish plates on the side here, is a plate right on this seam, right there. But as you can see, that has a bend to it, and the fish plate is flat, so I took about 20 minutes and threw together a quick little metal break and we're gonna see if it works normally you would want to have uh, a guide rod that comes down the side here to keep every with everything aligned maybe even with a little return spring but that would have been quite a bit more effort than what I have into this and I'm really just trying to put that slight bend into this 3 16th here so we're gonna line it all up We'll uh, raise this up, align this with the, the die here, I guess you'd call it, and then see if we can get a good press in there. We only need a little bit. I, I have to measure that angle, but it's really not all that much. I can't remember exactly what it is, but if this will bend this plate at all, it should be just enough. So. Let's give it a shot. I got her all loaded up. First time using the flatbed other than uh, the three or four bags of concrete that I hauled home. Oops. 
So what we're looking at here now is we test fit everything and these slipper springs they didn't come with any measurements and you just kind of have to test fit them when you get them because even if you find measurements online uh, you know this middle equalizer bar could be different the springs could be different length so we test fit it and determined that these need to come back three quarters of an inch because these slipper spring hooks are hitting on this bolt. It's too tight. So we're gonna move back three quarters of an inch, give it some more play, and then move the rear slipper spring uh, anchor on the back spring, because it goes eye, slipper, eye, and then slipper. But it's a little too tight as well, not quite. So we're gonna move that one forward half an inch, which we already did on the other side. The other side's burned in, it's good to go. Uh, so once we get this side done, we can pick the axle back up off the jacks uh, on the rear and uh, start working on that, getting that gooseneck out of the garage and burned into the front of this frame. But, yep, so let's get to it. All right, well, the day has come to get this gooseneck out of the garage. I've been looking forward to it, but I'm also a little worried. I've got the Jeep I can drag it with. If I have trouble moving it, I'm probably just gonna try and load it on the flatbed and back it over to the side of the house. It's not that far to move, but these, uh, these big rocks that they put in these houses are really difficult to walk on, so. But we have to get it over to this gate right there and then flipped up into position. And it's not too terribly heavy, but we'll see. Might just be a bunch of flips until we can get it to where it needs to be but uh like i said worst case we'll pull it with the jeep or load it on the back of the flatbed and i'm gonna try and see how far i can get it by myself before i call my buddies in for some reinforcements but uh that's the next step let's get this thing out of here
All right, so after I got the spine compression out of the way, uh, I decided to go ahead and move to mechanical advantages. So we're using the come along now. We're gonna drag it up and do a little more spine compression, uh, flipping it onto the trailer. Yeah, it's good for the body. All right, now we got it like this when you think about some sort of tension on the back. So when we get to this balancing point or past this balancing point, we don't have it off the trailer back where we started this morning. So let's uh, figure something out for that. All right, we're back out here another day. We'll do a little update before we get to work today. Had some really bad weather, wind and rain lately, so I really didn't get a lot of chance to record, but uh, we'll cover as much as we can in this update. So we got the gooseneck on and uh, everything is burnt into place. Uh, one thing that I do wanna add here is some fish plates to this here. We have to inside weld so we'll climb up on a ladder inside there and weld that up on the inside. This will end up being a toolbox. So one thing I'll admit is I'm starting to get a little worried about weight because eh, at least on here I bought eighth inch diamond plate and I should have gone with a lighter gauge for the toolbox because eighth inch is definitely going to be heavy and I'm going to end up using two sheets because I want a big toolbox uh, that'll open up in the middle will be this winch mounted up um, inside of the box. So then you'll just have the fair lead or the hoss, the rope hoss on the outside. If you can imagine it, it'll be set back. This will be the, the wall of the toolbox here it's to get the fenders knocked out, the drive over fenders. Um, but before I can really do that, I need to finish or start the rub rail on that side. This is the rub rail on this side. I had originally bought two inch uh, tall by quarter inch thick 
flat bar or metal strap for the rubber rail but you know i just didn't like the look of the two inch because then it left some down here so i just went and, and bought some three inch but we have our i used uh two and a half inch by two and a half inch outside quarter wall so two inch by two inch inside which is the same as your hitch receivers uh i've just kind of been using that on my stake pockets on my truck i use it for this and you know i just then i just get receiver tube or two inch by two inch square tube that's just more common for me and i'm more likely to use like a metal upright post than i am a wooden like two by four for a, a stake so and then this just kind of also gives you the ability to to mount different things like all my vices and tools and stuff are on receiver tube so uh but we'll, we'll work our way down so we've got our pipe spools here got our receiver tube got our three inch tall rub rail going to bring the fender down so this is just kind of here temporarily so i can decide on the shape that i want this to be when i get here but the fender will come to here and extend out it'll go up over the tire and then this face piece on the outside i i think i wanted to have the nice curve with a little you know a little bump down in the middle instead of i just don't i've seen trailers with driver fenders where it's just like a ramp straight and then a ramp and this is just kind of left open and I, I don't really like it i don't like the way that looks so i wanted to go the other route but uh this will be eighth inch diamond plate in the middle here will have a nice heavy duty uh support so that's that rub rail back here is done same thing left overhanging to decide what i want to do i don't really want a sharp edge here just because tires can't get caught on that so we're going to bring the rub rail probably bring the rub rail around or something I, i've got to decide if i'm going to put a piece in here i might just put a piece of diamond plate triangle in here just to clean it up and get rid of that sharp edge there and that sharp edge there and uh if i haven't shown you this yet this is the receiver tube which came in extremely useful this my plan is to drop a receiver in there and either be able to put a directional pulley in here or a, another winch fair leader hoss uh, so essentially just like another directional pulley most likely i'll just do a directional pulley for the most part but uh by adding this you can bring your winch line down the center of your trailer to the middle of the rear and then off to your vehicle hey tape measure and then off to your vehicle and the distance so that as you drag it you're not dragging it to the front of the trailer to where you have to reposition uh, to get a straight shot you're dragging it to the rear of the trailer to right here in the middle uh, so then you just drag it on there and another thing you can do is if you have a disabled vehicle on the trailer you go from the winch back to this directional pulley up to the vehicle itself and as you pull the winch line in you're pulling the vehicle off of the trailer so just uh, a little thing that I thought of that I wanted to put on my trailer so but as you can see on this side, no rub rail. Nice clean look, but you gotta have rub rail to strap stuff down, so. Let's get to work on that. We don't have a lot of space over here. We gotta move some junk. Kind of building in tight quarters back here and working on these rocks is horrible. There's like, compared to that rock size to like my foot, you're just constantly like tripping and, and rolling your ankles, so. That's installed. Uh, I wanted to keep it off of the the I-beam just a little bit so the top plate would fit. So we just kind of did a nice filler weld there and there. And then back here it was enough that I uh, put in a fill. Up. I welded a piece in and then welded to that piece. And this piece is welded on this side and the back side. Welds aren't the most beautiful. Like I said, it's been really windy and rainy here and I was welding in the rain the other day. So it's not perfect, but... That'll more than support the weight. We got some welds down here and then on the inside as well. So we used a piece of, I don't even know what this is. Or I cut the end off of it, but it's like a inch and an eighth inside diameter. This is one inch, so it gave you a little room for play here. And the way this works is you have to You end up drilling your holes really close to the outside of the, the tube or the pipe because you have to slip it all the way in one direction, like so. 
and then you can pull it out. So you really can't have it any wider than slip, slipped all the way in one direction and then to the edge of this. But instead of trying to, well, it gave me a little more meat on this side and then it also gave me a way to just slip it on, set it down, slide it across and line it up. So what I did was I, I notched the tube there like that. So you just set it down, line it up, done. Alright, so right now we're just scoring our, our straight line so that we can bend these without a metal break. Eighth inch diamond plate. Probably diamond plate and anything doesn't like to bend very straight just because of the diamonds. It's kind of their point is to not allow a lot of flex, but so we're just going to score the back sides and then fold them up. This one still needs cleaned up with the flapper disc or flapper wheel, but we just scored it because we have everything set up right now. But we're about to score the other one and then we'll go to bending it, see how it looks. Tired of inhaling the disc from these grinding wheels. Had a sore throat for like three days. Can't be good for your lungs, so. Respirator.
All right, we got her all hooked up. Let's go grab some lumber.